in cases of childhood cancer. Now those families at Weston Elementary School in Ripping claim the tower could have exposed their kids to harmful radiation. Sprint says the tower is safe and has operated well below federal safety limits, but the company turned it off anyway and plans to move it to a new location. They don't want to be a 5G trial community. Outside my home, that would be horrible. 5G is coming to LA and the new cell towers that are needed to accommodate that are popping up all over the city. Yes, but what does that mean for the people who have to live right next to them? Two on your sides, Christine Lazar is here with a look at the potential risks of these towers. And when I say right next to them, I mean literally right, right next, next to, them. to them. Now imagine waking up one day, looking out your window and seeing a cell tower just feet from your dining room. Some people prefer an ocean view or a view of city lights or maybe the mountains. But it's safe to say that almost no one would dream of a view like this. What is that? It looked like science fiction from the 50s or something. It's enormous. There was no advance notice whatsoever. We saw them digging, and the next thing we know, there was this giant thing on the lamppost. John's wife is a two-time cancer survivor. And they put this monster out there right next to where I sit at a dining room table. 5G is set to come to California by year's end, and the new technology requires that cell phone towers are closer together. It's happening in communities all across the country. Mysterious orange pipes are popping up on the edge of town, stamped with the words fiber optic. There's a reason why these death towers are getting closer and closer. And the reason is because they're trying to kill you, ladies and gentlemen. It's right there on the Georgia Guidestones. And you've been made painfully aware of it during this crisis that we're experiencing right now, this pandemic. And undoubtedly, this radiation is bad for you. There's example after example, and we, we just want to play this clip from Tony from Australia. Check this out. Come down here, I want to show you this Wi-Fi extender that I purchased. Look at this, 2,500, 4,700. 6,000, 7,500. I mean, really? 9,500. I mean, really? He says, I mean, the death towers are one thing. And what you're getting exposed to at home and, you know, with your phones and with your laptops, that's another thing. And, you know, the radiation is so bad everywhere that you really need an EMF meter wherever you go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't ask me what the video guy is doing because that dude's obviously on vacation. This is not the right video, video guy. Let's see if this one helps. And I specialized in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave. But they don't just teach you radar. They teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. Microwaves then were used as weapons, as they are today. It is a, a perfect stealth weapon. And when governments don't like a group of people, for instance, the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base, they camped, they were microwaved. We microwaved Catholics in Northern Ireland to make them sick. They love microwaving protesters and Christians, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, when they're not busy trying to kill you, they're definitely feeding you full of propaganda. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on social media. media. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Extremely dangerous indeed. Now, we were talking about EMF meters, and it's important that you get one. Now, it doesn't matter which one you get, as long as you have one. But the El Cheapo at Home Depot for 20 bucks isn't going to do it. It only picks up the static electric fields. It doesn't pick up the pulsed electromagnetic radiation from these death towers. So you want something that's a little more high-end. And here are probably, you know, some of the more... Uh, some of the more common ones that you see, but there's others. Uh, you know, on the left is the tri-field meter. You see that quite a bit. We'll be featuring that one 
as well. And you have the Gigahertz solution, which is really kind of like the Cadillac or the gold standard made in Germany and the like. And then on the right, you have the trusty EMF 390. Now, they all vary in price, but they all basically do the same thing, except that the EMF 390 and the tri-field meter pick up static electric fields as well. But essentially, you know, right here in, in their given modes, they're doing the same thing. And you'll see that, you know, these meters fluctuate quite a bit. Why do they fluctuate? Because this isn't a thermometer. These are pulsed electric fields. And it's really only showing you a fraction of the pulses because these things are at, you know, gigahertz speeds or megahertz speeds, which is millions or billions of, of pulses per second. It's, it's outrageous. But essentially, you know, they're, they're all in the same ballpark. You'll notice on the tri-field meter on the left, they've got, you know, big numbers. And then there's other numbers in the top left, which measure peak and uh, average numbers. In the gigahertz solution, there's a switch for that. And in the tri-field meter on the right, the EMF 390, there's a mode for that. But essentially, you know, they're picking up the same thing. And, you know, we like showing this comparison so that you can see, you know, that they're pretty much in the same ballpark. You know, they're, they're fluctuating and they're probably at different rhythms as far as what they display, but they're all ballpark. And, and that's basically, you know, uh, important, obviously, to know that there's some sense of accuracy in the measurements. But you need measurements. You need to know what you're getting dosed with. And the problem is, is that they're now embedding sensors as they call them in everything street lamps and you know even manholes we've got video of a manhole here but you've probably seen this video where they're taking apart the uh the led street lamps and you can see the directed energy weapon the uh antenna array uh towards the top there and there's older style uh and you know basically uh, mesh networks older style mesh networks that use a different a slightly different antenna but they're everywhere now and you know they're they're coming on every street corner and not only that but they're going to be at bus stops they're going to be even the manhole did you did you even think there would be such a thing as a smart manhole and so you know a lot of people especially people that watch this broadcast don't live in the cities they don't live in the urban environments but your house is you know, as contaminated by this technology as the outside world. And the more of, the more of it you have, the worse it is. And quite honestly, I, I can't even imagine, you know, running Wi-Fi, running a Wi-Fi network uh, in home right now, given the amount of radiation. It's just insane. And it's as bad as living, you know, right next to a death tower. Now, you might not think it's as bad, but essentially distance makes all the difference in EMF waves. And, you know, you start learning about electric fields rather quickly when you have a meter. Here's the EMF 390 uh, again. That was in the tri-field mode. This is a different mode, which is an, F, an RF spectrum. This is an RF browser. We'll get into that. Um, this is, you know, the tri-field meter. We've played this video a lot. And the guy's, you know, at the window and it goes off the scales. And it's pretty obvious that you don't want to be living anywhere, you know, near a place that's off the scale, you know, when it comes to a meter. Now, the EMF 390 maxes out at about a thousand milliwatts, but the tri-field meter like this one and the gigahertz solution, they max out at about 20 milliwatts. So, you know, 20 milliwatts is bad. It's real bad. But a thousand is worse, and you'd be surprised, you know, what you're getting dosed with. Now, these things are super handy. The tri field that you're looking at right now here is about 200 bucks plus shipping. And so, you know, that's pretty much the average price. The gigahertz solution is three, four hundred bucks. If you get all the toys and the bells and whistles, that can run you a thousand dollars. And so that's why we like the EMF 390 to be quite honest with you, because it's about half price, quarter price compared to everybody else. And it does the job, it fits in your pocket, and it's got more modes than the, this tri-field meter does. And it's got an all-in-one screen, it's got, um, you know, basically 
analyzers or modes where you can actually see the the waveform coming at you. And I know we've got some real interesting video as far as that's concerned. We'll get to it. But, you know, again, the, uh, the big threat to most people really isn't the death towers, as funny as that might sound, because, you know, they are deadly. But the real danger is the other end of that death tower, which is your phone and also the Wi-Fi. And from our measurements, I mean, the fields can be as extreme within, you know, five feet or so of, of that device. And so while the death tower might be a mile away or two miles away, your router is like in the same room as you. And then the device that's connecting to the router is like right on your lap or right in your face. And, you know, so on and so forth. And you've always got your phone on you. And you'd be surprised. I mean, we were actually shocked you know, uh, taking measurements near some of these devices. But also you have to worry about the schools. I mean, they've got industrial routers for like 30, 40, 50, uh, you know, gadgets at the same time. And so what's going on at the schools, I mean, if you've got kids in schools, I would definitely want to run through there with an EMF detector before putting them there because not every school is the same and not every classroom is the same and you should care. You know, you should care because that's like, you know, that's basically full-time exposure. And the amount of radiation that people are being exposed to now, you know, is, I mean, it's astronomical compared to what it was when we were, you know, going to school for most of us, you know. And, um, and look, I mean, I went to high school in the 90s and and there really wasn't a whole lot of cell phones and until college really and so look we didn't have to deal with a lot of that but today i mean it's just super super bad and with the 5g it's even worse i mean they're actually going to be phaser beaming you like the starship enterprise and this is you know you can research this beam forming and you know when you when you look at what the phones are going to be like they're going to have like 10 antennas on them and they're all like beaming you know, different uh, types of data at different frequencies. You know, you have one antenna for pictures, another antenna for video, another antenna for your camera, another antenna for browsers, et cetera, et cetera. And you're just going to get nailed with so much stuff. I mean, you know, the last thing you want is some kind of 5G phone, 5G device. But honestly, you don't want to live in a wireless environment. And people that, you know, can see this with a detector have totally changed their lifestyles and now it's more important than ever because we've seen the white papers we've seen what this technology can do and you know make no bones about it you don't want sustained long-term exposure it's one thing to drive by a death tower on your way to work it's another thing to live you know in a field like this and a lot of people you know they love the wi-fi they get the extenders they got the you know ip cameras and the like and when you get overexposed, you start suffering neurological damage. That's, that's in the studies as well. And, you know, what's more, you know, Wi-Fi friendly than Berlin? You know, the Germans are way advanced when it comes to this technology, and you can tell. You can tell. Now, we've, uh, we've got some comparisons. We noticed that just looking at electric fields, for example, you want to be at one volt per meter, you know, ideally speaking. And we noticed that comparing, you know, laptops, uh, the, the Chinese laptops, the Chinese phones were way up there, way, way up there. So here's an HP made in America, right? And this HP was, you know, plugged in was somewhere around 50 to 100 volts per meter, which is, you know, which is significant. But, you know, plugged in, it's worse than when it's not plugged in. So worst case scenario, plugged in 100 volts per meter. You go to the Asus thing, and you're at 14, 1500 volts per meter. Let's see if we can bring that back up. I mean, it was it's insane. And you know, you, the netbooks are off the charts. You don't want one of those little mini netbooks. And even the MacBook Pro was way off the charts. So you might think that spending more is safer, which you know usually it is but not necessarily and you know when they're putting out products like this with you know these this huge difference in electric fields 
you obviously know that not every laptop is the same and not every phone is the same. I mean, we've got footage of, you know, what's going on with these phones and essentially they're off the charts as well. You know, these new smartphones, you're, you're putting like a thousand, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred volts per meter up at your face on top of the RF radiation that's broadcasting to the death tower. I mean, you'd have to be a special kind of stupid, uh, you know, not to understand. Now, we've taken the EMF 390 like out in all sorts of different places and gotten videos from people. And, you know, this is one of uh, our favorite hiking trails. And what you'll notice, in fact, with a meter is that they create spotlights right on the trail to zap you as you're going out into the country. You would never expect this, right? And in fact, these spotlights are worse than being right next to the death tower. And so you'd think like you're right next to the death tower, that's the worst of the reading. No, it's the spotlight created by each one of those rectennas that's the worst. And you wouldn't even know that unless you had a meter. But what you notice is that they deliberately put the spotlights where people go. And the spotlight doesn't have to be there. You'd still get a signal just fine. And I know we've got more video. This is kind of like, oh look, the sheeple. How nice. Video guy, so not impressed. But, you know, we were right, this was the tower. And we were right next to the tower and it was, you know, the, the readings weren't that high. And it was kind of surprising. Now here's a nice little feature with the EMF 390. This is um, the RF browser mode and you can use it to fox hunt. And when you're driving around, you'll see relatively low signal strength, relatively small wave patterns. And as you get closer to a death tower, you'll start to see it like, you know, increase. And of course the video guy just totally messed up there. Wow, thanks video dude. But you can, you can see that right next to the tower, you're getting about two milliwatts, which is you know pretty significant. And yet, when we were on this little trail, at the spotlight, you were getting like 11 milliwatts. You know what I mean? So it was actually like five times stronger in the spotlight, like a mile away, than it was right next to it. And these are the kind of things that you start to discover as you have a meter, and it really changes your understanding as far as uh, what's going on. And, you know, this meter has been everywhere. There it is. Uh, checking out the Eiffel Tower. Now, it was really weird because, you know, in the big cities, you would expect that it would be always, you know, 10, 20 milliwatts. It's probably like that now. And with the new age towers, it's all 10, 20 milliwatts for the most part. But, you know, it's nice to get a feel for what your area is like, where the hot, the hot spots are, where the dead zones are, if you will. And Homeowners worry they'll be the first in the area to have 5G cell service. Nobody wants it. Now, you know, these news reports have all been taken down. Why? Because, you know, the telecoms are basically you know, a huge source of revenue for them. But for a while, they were putting out reports like this. Listen to Linked to several recent cases of childhood cancer. Now, those families at Weston Elementary School in Ripping claim the tower could have exposed their... Oh, it definitely did. I mean, they, they had like eight students and like, I don't know, four or five teachers at least at, the, at that elementary school. And that's just one of the many cancer clusters directly in proximity to these death towers. And it's only when people start talking to each other that they understand the link. But otherwise, the television keeps you in the dark for the most part. And there's a reason for that, too. It's not just the telecom dollars, but it's also because this administration has made it a national security priority. And if you haven't seen the famous you know, Trump 5G speech, uh, then you haven't seen it. But this is it. And you know, he's talking 5G, 6G, which is the 60 gigahertz mesh networks and the like. And, you know, we've talked about how those things are already in place, unlicensed, and the 60 gigahertz has a huge affinity for oxygen, and that's kind of where, you know, people are starting to get the idea that perhaps there's something else going on with this crisis. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on social media. Yeah, talk about clones, huh? We were talking about uh, the clones yesterday. That broadcast got hit. Now, 
The EMF 390 sells for 148 on Amazon, but we sell it for 129. Now it's got, you know, over a thousand positive reviews, 97% positive uh, feedback on the Amazon site. So it's it's you know it's been around. You might not have ever seen this one before, but we like this one the best because it's it's cost effective. It's only 130 bucks compared to two three hundred dollars. You know, when it comes to three hundred dollars or even two hundred dollars, a lot of people wouldn't get one. But for a hundred bucks, you certainly can afford it. You can budget for it, um, and you know it's direct from the manufacturer. So it's an affiliate link. We give you all the descriptions, all the information on our website. When you click order now, it'll bring you to the manufacturer, which is GQ Electronics. And it's a bit of an old school website. It's more for you know mobile phones, I guess. And uh, you know this is the order form, so. That way you get a feel for what it's like. It's totally normal. You know, you go from our website to GQ's website during the order. You fill out the order form and you get it in a couple days. They're real quick about the shipping. Excellent customer service. And I think it's, you know, it's nice to be able to have uh, a meter given what's going on out there right now. And, you know, this one's got all sorts of different modes. You put it in the cradle and you just drive around with it. And, you know, we're going to have to republish all of the tutorials. You know, how do you get into the different modes, all the things that it can do uh, and the like. And if you have one, I mean, you know, you just want to play with it. Once you get the logic of the four buttons down, how to get into the main menu, how to go to different modes, it's, it's fairly easy. But, um, you know, it fits in your pocket and, you know, it's at the right price. And again, you know, the $20 meter, uh, and I specialized in the $20 meter that you pick up at Home Depot just doesn't look at this. We're getting all sorts of interference now, but the $20 meter at Home Depot doesn't pick up the, um, the wireless radiation. So it picks up the static electric fields. And so you really want something that picks up, you know, what your router's putting out, what these death towers are putting out, what your cell phone is putting out, what your IP cameras are putting out, what your tablets and all of the rest are putting out. You really want to know what you're getting dosed with. And, you know, again, the, you know, the recommendations from the bio initiative, uh, bio initiative safety standards are about one milliwatt per meter squared max for sustained, you know, for sustained exposure and uh, one volt per meter max for uh, the electric field, for the static electric field. So it gives you, you know, some guidance there. You can find copies of that uh, or references for that on our website. And the link for the MF390 is in the video description. Uh, and it's also on our website, stfnreport.com. But check that out. Uh, it's also on the the fake book page so if you go to stfn reloaded on fake book go to our page you'll see the the meter there the link there so you can just check it out and you know shop around we absolutely want people to get a meter it doesn't have to be the emf 390 but it's it's pretty much the cheapest meter that picks up the the wireless uh radiation accurately and you know we've uh, we've played the comparison video we can play it again but you know every meters uh, a little different as far as where the sensors are every meters a little different as far as um, you know quite a few things but this one is is highly accurate I mean fox hunting with this meter is entertainment it beats Pokemon go and I don't know where the you know the video went but you know, you can track down like the hidden death towers. You can see them coming before you see them on the horizon. And, um, you know, it's it's a trip, to be quite honest. And seeing like how much you're getting dosed with now uh, is another trip. Because if you've had a meter for a while, you'd know that the dosage just keeps going up. And now the standard is really 10 to 20 milliwatts for these regular, you know, cell towers and probably, you know, two, three milliwatts for a small cell. So a small cell puts out about as much as a 3G tower, more or less. But the 4G mega towers, those are the real death towers. 
And, you know, when they start beaming in your direction, watch out, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to leave it there for this broadcast. If you're joining us late, check us out on Replay On Demand. This was a, a live show. But otherwise, if you're, you know, watching this on the fake book and all that stuff, much love to everyone out there. But really, I mean, this, this thing's a lifesaver. It'll change your world. It'll start, you know, having you put up aluminum foil and mylar like you wouldn't believe. And you see the difference, too. And you feel better. You sleep better. And, you know, if you got pesky neighbors, it just bounces right back into them. So there you go. They want to set up a router on your wall. Well, you just set up a little tin foil, and there you go. And it works. It really does. But, you know, knowing, you know, what you're getting dosed with uh, makes, a, makes a difference. And we wouldn't recommend it unless... Um, you know, it was a lifesaver. It'll truly save your life. I mean, you'd probably be surprised you're sleeping right next to, you know, a huge electric field and you didn't even know it. And all of that's linked to leukemia and other things. Long-term exposure, slow kill, eugenics. You know, that's what this program is about. And there you go. We'll leave it there. Till the next time, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this, you are the resistance.